Lamb pizza. What in the world yep. are we Lamb. talking about here? Dance or that? <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Welcome to Sorgi Stories. Still giving you our game plan videos. Mm -hmm. Since we're not going to be able to travel to see the Brewers this year, we're going to go ahead and start planning our travels for all the 17 cities that we haven't yet been to to see the Brewers play. And we're including this, Washington, D.C., on our list. This is our food list. The spots where we want to check out some of the great restaurants in one of the great cities of the world are top five list. We found plenty with the stuff that you like and we're going to start with your number one right from the get-go. It ain't just about food though. You got some ping pong, I call it ping pong. And you got prosciutto on pizza. Prosciutto is a type of ham that this kid mm -hmm. loves, mm -hmm. maybe is addicted to. It is the Possibly. creme de la creme of ham. To give you a, a look at how good this place is, Food Network Magazine called it the best wood-fired pizza in Washington, D.C. That's a pretty good uh, review there. Plus, you get a chance to play ping pong, table tennis. By the way, I, I don't like <laughs> not the paddle into your face when you play. Come on. No, no, it's pretending to hit the ball and the ball bounces and hits you in the nose. <laughs> Bluebirds. So after that, though, you can enjoy some fantastic cuisine. Of course, I'm going to go for the pizza as well. But I got to go for the clam pizza, a northeastern tradition in like Connecticut and Rhode Island. Clams, seafood, right on there. That's an option, as is lamb pizza. What in the world yep. are we lamb. talking about here? Dance or that? <laughs> 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 The Atlanta restaurant that we reviewed a few weeks ago that you checked out. No, you're not going to find lamb pizza at Waffle House. But it is one of those great experimental pizza spots that gives him the opportunity for the kind of pizza that he loves. Some of the other restaurants in this town, though, have a ton of history to them, including... Gatsby's. And this place ain't exactly young. It's almost as old as the United States of America. 1789 is when it opened in Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe. Now we have them in order. They've got to have them in the proper <laughs> numerical order of when they served. And the other reason why we picked it is, or why you picked it, is because, of course... Well, yeah, chicken tenders, no big deal, uh, ham chicken biscuits. Tenders. Chicken tenders! Oh my god! <laughs> you always knocked your computer over! <laughs> Yeah, he, that's how that's how much he loves Jack chicken tenders. Tenders. Exactly, exactly. They also have, and you might be interested in this, ham biscuits yep. with mascarpone cheese, or the creamy cheese, what? and raspberry puree. Huh? You might enjoy it, I think. What is raspberry puree and mascarpone <laughs> blah, 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 cheese? <laughs> You'll find out, kid. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> I'd be going for the Gadsby Burger. It's a cheeseburger with fried sweet potatoes on it. Also, want to check out the Shellfish Newberg. Big jumbo shrimp, possibly also some lump crab with risotto on their menu. Interesting. And George Washington's favorite meal. Yeah. Duck breast, scalloped potatoes, corn pudding, road clouds, whatever that is, and orange glaze. But to be able to eat what George Washington ate. That actually would be super cool. That would be fantastic. Another historic tavern in Washington, D.C. with a pretty good food list. Number three is... Martin's Tavern. And every president from Truman to W. Bush ate there. Can you remember all? How many presidents <laughs> is that? Let's see. Truman... Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Carter, actually no, Ford, Carter, Reagan. There we go, you're getting that, you're getting that. Bush, okay. Walker Bush, Clinton, W. Bush. 
Wow. That's 11. 11 predicates wow. at that place. Now, they don't necessarily have your favorites of chicken tenders or prosciutto pizza. I'm gonna go with some fish and chips. That's pretty good. He, he enjoys a good fish and chips, the old English staple. I'm going for the oyster stew. I might also be going for, again, the seafood pasta. Saute lobster. Lobster. Shrimp, mussels, tomatoes, and spinach. I could also, though, go for their seafood paella, a fantastic what? Spanish dish. Number four for you, again, more history of Washington, D.C., and really the United States of America in restaurant form at a location that is just maybe two blocks from the White House. Okay, that's pretty cool. It opened in 1906. It's called the Occidental. And we're gonna have to probably get it reasonably dressed up. At least a good shirt, maybe a tie. Yeah, I can do that. Um, some good khaki dress pants. It, but it is a fantastic place. Loads of photos of historical figures and politics in sports and one very interesting party that was held there. Okay, the Washington Senators mm -hmm. held their victory party right there after winning game seven in 12 innings. 1924 World Series. The Occidental was also well known in 1962 for a very historic moment that might have saved the free world in a lot of ways. This was during the Cuban Missile Crisis when Soviet Union backed Cuba was going to be hosting Soviet missiles coming onto their property and be able to shoot nuclear missiles like a shorter distance to the American coast than between Milwaukee and Chicago. Oh wow. That, it was a very dangerous time. Well, inside this restaurant, an ABC News reporter was talking to the Soviet ambassador to the United States. Well, that ambassador pushed over a bunch of documents to the reporter with a plan to end the Cuban Missile Crisis. That plan was publicized. Step A led to step B, led to step C, and they actually got a peace agreement done. Wow. The entire existence of this planet may have been saved by a place that serves you... Chicken tenders. Chicken tenders. Chicken tenders. Well, I get my she crab soup, which is one of the great seafood soups what on the you East Coast. Y'all talking about out here. Or short rib grilled cheese. Great barbecue grilled cheese. Are we going to Kansas City and Cleveland together? And Italiano. Italiano. Squid ink linguine with a boatload of seafood. That's the linguine pasta that's all black formed from the ink of squid. Ew. But, that's a delicacy. It's good. I yeah. promise. Yeah. And number five on your list, even more Washington, D.C. history. Again, a block away from the White House. The old Ebbett Grill and uh, established in 1856. Grant Cleveland, Harding, and Teddy Roosevelt all loved this spot. And you'll see a lot of current politicians, insiders, a lot of journalists, a lot of other people getting together and dining there. That's a place to be seen, to see a lot of celebrities in the political world. And yes, they still also have your favorite food. Chicken tenders! Chicken tenders. Now for my top five listing. And the first one is one that you actually heard the great David Marinus, one of the great authors of our time, mention is at Nationals Park. They also have a location on 14th Street and U Street in Washington, D.C. It's called Ben's Chili Bowl. It is a landmark place. It goes back to 1958. Mm -hmm. And it's in a neighborhood that was once called Black Broadway. You ever heard the names Duke Ellington, Miles Davis, Ella Fitzgerald, yep. Nat King Cole? Yep. And yes, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., yep. President Obama. They all ate there. What? They are known for a particular type of hot dog called the Chili Half Smoke Hot Dog. It's basically a super gourmet chili dog. It's got mustard, onions, and a spicy homemade chili sauce. Almost a West Virginia hot dog without the coleslaw. Yeah, we're talking West Virginia without coleslaw. But it is really, really good. 
and Renata must stop over in Washington, D.C. My number two is just a couple of blocks away from there, and it was suggested to us by our friend Shannon Sims from TMJ4 News who joined us at the DeSable Museum in Chicago on one of our Sorgy Stories trips. It's called Bus Boys and Poets. It's not just a place that's about the cuisine. It's a place that has a powerful social conscience. It's part restaurant. It's part, as your app app would say, Poetry Emporium. But we're not kidding. What is a Poetry Emporium? Well, he joked that it's a place where you hear a lot of poetry. And this place, you actually can. Huh? They have a lot of poetry nights, a lot of music nights, uh, a lot of conversations happen there that they organize about race, about healing divisions between people with different religions, and so many other subjects. Now, when it comes to the cuisine, you're probably going to have to go with grilled chicken, not necessarily fried chicken tenders, but they serve chicken. I'll take some grilled cheese. They have grilled cheese. Yes, they do. I would want to go for the Busboy Burger, a brisket patty. Brisket burger. Okay, we're talking Kansas City here. I think. We're talking, yes, barbecue, southern cookie, Texas brisket especially, a burger based on that. Or, I love the idea of the shrimp and chorizo pasta. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. The most Milwaukee thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> I don't know about shrimp being Milwaukee, but a daddy dish certainly. And also a lot of Milwaukee cuisine is based on the Milwaukee 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 Mil to Washington, D.C. Speaking of pasta, we pop over to the Georgetown District, the Georgetown University area of Washington, D.C., and a place I've been to, Filomena Ristorante. Filomena Ristorante. Nana and I went there back on our trip in 1990. Oh, cool. They have in-house women who are known as the Pasta Mamas. Okay. Right in the front of the restaurant, you see them in the front window, they're making fresh ravioli, other fresh pastas. All the pastas are fresh, wow. just like over Claire's okay. down in Metro Chicago that we took you to yep. a few months ago. You might enjoy what's known as the Sandy Ravioli. It's a cheese ravioli dish. It's oven baked and it's dri drizzled with breadcrumbs as they describe it. So mm. basically think sort of along the lines of what you might experience with either a chicken tender or a fried cheese curd. Not necessarily as fried, but with breadcrumbs, I think you'd like that. Also, a bunch of different pasta dishes you would enjoy there. They have ham and cheese pizza. They have rice balls. Ooh, do they have the ham? We'd have to research and see if they do. Because I love those that we got at the Sicilian Baker in Phoenix. But I'd be going for any kind of fresh pasta that they've got, including what they call ravioli the Chia Chia. Whole fresh shrimp, big sea scallops in the same dish with massive cheese filled ravioli in what they call the Creamy Cardinale lobster sauce. Evil has cardinal in it. I'm kidding. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm. My jaw is about to hit the floor no, it's at not. the idea of how look. cool that is. Let me look. <laughs> okay, Dr. Sorgi. <laughs> That's not happening. Number four on my list is a tribute to the American farmer. It's been featured on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. It is Founding Fa Farmers DC. And what's so cool about this is that it is collectively owned by 42,000 different American family farmers who owns stock in this restaurant. Cool, that's pretty cool. There's a lot of options for you. For you. They got some really good French toast pancakes and waffles. And for lunch, what would you think about prosciutto on what they call farm bread? Interesting. They have seven cheese macaroni, seven different cheeses in the macaroni. Interesting. Along with fish and chips. But I'd be going for, I think, the farmhouse platter. It includes baby cheeseburgers. It includes a Ben's Chili Bowl style chili dog and pork ribs. You know, you know what ribs are now after the Atlanta episode, don't you? Yeah. Okay, so we, we, we've cleared that up. Along with corn and coleslaw. This is like a ridiculous platter for one human being to eat. 
Finally, part of what makes Washington DC so amazing of a, of a city as it is, is its international flavor because it is the seat of American government and so many nations from around the world are represented because of the different embassies and other international presences there because of the world of international diplomacy. Mama Aisha's restaurant in the Northwest sector of Washington DC is a product of that. If you go back to the year 1960, a Middle East immigrant who owned a bunch of farms back home came to the United States and worked as a cook in the Syrian embassy. This was Mama Aisha. And after her experience there, she learned so many different dishes, she opened up her own restaurant, her own Middle East place. That story to me is phenomenal. They have many different dishes from the yeah. traditional, like hummus, which you see your mommy and I sometimes have, yeah. falafel, baba ganoush, to stuff I'd never heard of when I looked at the menu. And that's why I love going to these places to experience different cultures through food. For example, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Feel free to correct me if I'm not, and I apologize if I'm mistaken on this. Warak Inip. Stuffed grape leaves with ground lamb, lemon, and rice. Okay. And riash, Lamb chops and garlic potatoes. Interesting. Oh, this sounds good. This sounds phenomenal. The stuff you can't get in most cities, the stuff we can't get in Milwaukee, is the kind of thing that you can get when going to such an international city like Washington, D.C. Those are our top fives for Washington. We're gonna be taking a little bit of a break, not a massive one, but a little bit of a break from the game plan. Coming up, we got a special adventure that we're about to show you. In between though, between that adventure and this video, we got a couple guest opinions of some of the places we that we're going to check do. out. We do! Okay, I, I like the sound of that. From Southern California and from Atlanta. And we're going to have a little contest to see how many of each of these we picked right. Okay. From their picks to our picks. Right now I'm winning one to zero. So yep, I'm, he won the Boston round. I'm, we'll see how well I do with Southern California and Atlanta. I'm feeling like I got this. To check out those videos, our upcoming travel series from this summer. Yes, we did travel, even with coronavirus, and we did it safely. To check all that out, what do you do? Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, ding, ding, ding. Check the description for some cool links. And uh, comment, comment which restaurant sounds the best to you or the restaurants you've eaten at that we're talking about here. Or places we missed in Washington, which is such yeah. a fantastic city for food, for restaurants, because it is, again, so international and so historic. Meanwhile, go Burrs. Ooh, baseball is back, as we said in the beginning. So long. From Sorgy Story Studios in Milwaukee. Bye-bye-bye, y'all.